Welcome to WRC 19, the World Radio Communication Conference here in Shama Sheikh in Egypt, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Rasin Qatar, who is the CCO and CQO of uh, EB Lenhart. Welcome to the studio. Thank you, Max. It's a real pleasure for me, and I am really honored to be here on the stage. It's an interesting international event indeed. Okay, let's talk about uh, Ibi Lenhard. What, what, uh, what do you do exactly? Tell us a little bit about your organization and, and, and why you're here. We facilitate uh, the market access for private sector in general. So our concentration is on the European industry in general, automotive or medical industries. That's the first like row or stage in the scope of our business. Um, what we mean by market access is um, a very like small part of uh, the general concept of homologation and compliance. So we support our clients to get uh, type approvals or homologation or certificate of compliance worldwide. Um, our company is uh, always presented on international level. So our team was here before at the WRC 15. For me personally, it's the first time. It's interesting for me to be here to understand how the frameworks in general move on, yeah? Uh, for me, there was a lot of questions before I came here. So what's going on in the future? 5G as a disruptive innovation or not? How it will affect the private sector, yeah? This is important for us, for the future, to catch the wave, let us say, yeah? Uh, in addition, um, I, I'm very interested uh, to understand how are the um, social uh, organizations involved here because I don't notice that there is a real um, participation from the um, uh, social organizations or the activis activisms. Yeah? So social corporate responsibility, I believe it should be on the agenda or part of the agenda of the ITU in the future. How yes. much were you aware of this conference before and, and how, I mean, you mentioned obviously in 2015, yeah. your organization was here, but uh, how, how does the work of ITU study groups, for example, affect the private industry? Uh, actually, uh, it has a high level of uh, effect. Um, uh, let me um, start shortly with your first part of the question. I am relatively new to the concept in general. Yeah? And when I joined E.B. Lenhardt, like around five years ago, I didn't know about the whole concept. So this really like uh, switches red lights that involvement, uh, more maybe more media, more, more information should be like broadcasted about such kind of uh, international events or even uh, what's going on behind the scenes in itself. Yeah? Uh, private sector is always hunting to understand what the next regulation gonna, uh, is it gonna support them or is it gonna set constraints or obstacles in, in, the, in, the way, in their way to move forward in the development. Especially we are talking now in the automotive industry about the um, 79 to 81 gigahertz for the radar system. So Indeed. it's really interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, for E.B. Lenhardt, we uh, tend to raise the transparency bar here. So we developed uh, our own system. It's TAMSIS. Uh, it's a type of approval management system. It has been already used by many of our customers. So not even, it's not even a, a platform that is being used to B2B also, but even to the level up to the second level of the uh, customers, so OEMs are also re reusing our platform. Uh, our next aim is to have this platform used by authorities, which is important because when authorities use the platform, it's not only about um, a sustainable development movement in the bureaucracy, but we are talking here about a higher level of transparency, which is very important for us. And the relevance of ICU study groups, which are obviously uh, the work is very much feeding into this conference, but why the wider ramifications of uh, the resolutions, of the, the reports, uh, regulations, etc.? Let us say, from our side, we are a little bit um, a step away from this part of the conference, yeah? Because what we care about is uh, end effect or the final resolutions, yeah? This is what we care about. Now, um, I have attended many of the meetings 
I'm here as an advisor, yeah? So just to understand how the mechanisms move, yeah? How, how, how countries like reach agreements. It, it's very interesting, yeah? It's very important. Still, uh, we are behind the scenes, yeah? We, we just try to understand, we try to follow up, we try to cope. This is what we do here in the private sector. And in, in, in principle, uh, the conversations that you've been hearing, obviously, you very, you know, very, very simulating, but uh, do they make you feel, you were talking about the advent of 5G and, uh, and various yeah. other technologies that are coming to the forefront, do they make you feel confident for the future, optimistic for the future? Well, sure, yes. I'm very optimistic because, let us say, I have been in, in, in involved in other kind of activities on international level. What I see here is that there is a clear uh, tendency to reach an agreement, which is important, yeah? Other uh, activities might have a lot of other kind of political conflict of interest, which like raise the borders to, to reach an agreement. But here I see there is real technical issues going on, uh, real uh, intention to reach agreements, which is very good and very important, and s which reflects that we humans will come together at the end. And the spirit of consensus is very much engendered here at, uh, at WRC 90. Well, well, thank you very much for joining us and, and filling thank us in much. a little bit from your perspective, which is great. And, and hopefully we'll catch up with you again, perhaps at the next WRC. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks thank very you. much indeed. Thank you.